Hi everybody, welcome to Homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're looking at this book called Our Day Star Rising by Elder Jeffrey R. Holland. And uh, as far as I know, there haven't been any updates about Elder Holland, about him being hospitalized. So, yeah, I don't know, in one way, that's good news because it means that he's still with us. But, I don't know, just maybe... There hasn't been any significant change. Uh, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, prayers for Elder, Elder Holland. <clears throat> this is a book that came out pretty recently. If you go to Deseret Book, uh, this came out, it was published last year, 2022. Uh, this is not a paid promotion, but uh, I'm going to leave the link for Deseret Book in the description below. So there was somebody... Uh, anonymous that sent me this email the subject line elder holland comments on matthew 24 uh, if you're familiar with that chapter that's one of the main chapters in the new testament about the second coming and then we are the people okay so <clears throat> it starts off if you use this please keep it anonymous which i will hey jared i'm sure you saw this quote but it's too good to let you miss on the off chance that you didn't. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Cause you know, don't assume that I, that I've seen it. Feel free to send me any, any quotes that you know of. I may already have it, but just send it anyway. And, um, if it's something that I don't already have, then I'll, I'll, uh, add it to my spreadsheets. I'll let you know whenever I put it in a video. Okay. And then Anonymous continues, I don't have a source for this quote, and I have looked extensively because I'd love to read the rest of the context. I believe it came from a leadership meeting. I came across it in his book, Our Day Star Rising, pages 47 to 49, uh, which is a compilation of his teachings on the New Testament. Uh, there, is no, there is no footnote citing the source or mentioning the context of the quote. And then Anonymous puts the quote. But <clears throat> I uh, I told them uh, I would love to use this, but I have to be able to verify it. I don't want to put anything on my spreadsheets. It's not verifiable. And, and uh, generally, I don't like to share things unless they're verifiable. So they were good enough to send me pictures so that you can see that it really is uh, from the book. And so I want to read just this very short section that talks about Matthew 24. And there was something here that I added to my common misconceptions spreadsheet. Um, and I think that this is, I don't know, this gives us some pretty good insight as to how the general authorities, apostles, prophets, how they view the second coming. All right. So let's just start off here. <clears throat> okay. Matthew 24. As we follow the prophets, we will become more and more of the people that God expects us to be in preparation for the coming of his son. Okay. Already off the bat, follow the prophet, um, becoming a people that's ready uh, to receive Christ when he comes, which always, always makes me think of this. This was the, the last general conference of, uh, well, this was the October 2022 general conference, so two conferences ago. President Nelson, overcome the world and find rest. One crucial element of this gathering is preparing a people who are able, ready, and worthy to receive the Lord when he comes again. A people who have already chosen Jesus Christ over this fallen world a people who rejoice in their agency to live the higher, holier laws of Jesus Christ. I call upon you, my dear brothers and sisters, to become this righteous people. So uh, you can tell from this, it seems that uh, a big priority is to make sure that we're a people able, ready, and worthy in preparation for the second coming. Okay, so... <clears throat> Then he says, I don't know when the second coming is, but I know that it is one day closer today than it was yesterday. And it'll be one day closer tomorrow than it is today. And it is going to happen sometime. Okay. In fact, the beginnings of the second coming started around 200 years ago. 
in a grove of trees outside Palmyra, New York, with the great first vision of the Father and the Son. Again, we, we've talked about the significance of the April 2020 General Conference, and I think it has everything to do with this. Yes, you know, it's 200 years since the first vision, you know, so you celebrate things when 50 years go by, 100 years, 75 years, whatever. Um, yes, but look at it in light of what Elder Holland is saying, that that was the, be the beginnings of the second coming. Yeah. All right. So. And so it has been underway a long time. And if, if anyone asks you, as they sometimes sometimes ask me, when is the second coming? You can honestly say the initial elements of it are al already underway, nearly 200 years worth. When the grand moment of his ultimate appearance will come, we don't know. We leave that entirely in the hands of the Lord, and he says in the scriptures that not even the angels of heaven know of that final arrival. But when the final arrival comes, we need to look like his church. Okay, again, going back to what President Nelson said, people who are able, ready, and worthy. But in addition, now that I think about it, uh, this last general conference, President, President Nelson's main talk. Let me pull it up really quick. General Conference, April 2023. His main talk called Peacemakers Needed. Where um, the whole focus of his talk, and and he it's not just in this talk. He's talked about it before. How we need to avoid contention. Be, caref be careful with how we treat each other. Um, essentially, what he's talking about is being a Zion people. A people that are of one heart and one mind and pure of heart. And of course, there's <clears throat> uh, the symbolism, seemingly intentional symbolism, that he was a heart surgeon in his career. He worked on people's hearts. And uh, I think that's what's needed right now, um, especially being so close to the second coming, in my point of view. Okay, so. <clears throat> Going back, well, when the final arrival comes, we need to look like his church. When he comes, we need to look and act and be like his people. That is a responsibility that has never been required in the history of this dispensation or of any dispensation. That's interesting. That is a responsibility. What? What responsibility? looking like his church, <clears throat> acting like his church. That is a responsibility that has never been required in the history of this dispensation or of any dispensation. So he's making a distinction between now and <clears throat> the early history of the church, um, sometime earlier than now. That's really interesting. Um, no one has ever had to receive the Savior and present to him his church. That is our dispensation only. We are the people. I don't know how we are fortunate enough to do that. I don't know why we were the ones selected in the great councils of heaven before the world was to be that, but... We somehow got the privilege to come in this la in the last dispensation, the greatest dispensation of time, to pre prepare for the return of the living Son of the living God and to present to him his church. We are going to give the church of the Lamb to the Lamb, and no one has ever had to do that before, ever. Now, <clears throat> this next part, uh, this is what I put on my common misconceptions spreadsheet. Okay, so this is new. I've decided to put a new column here, which it's now column A. Uh, so if something's new, I'll put it here. If it's like new to my spreadsheet, and if I haven't shared it in a video yet, it'll have new. And I think I'll do that across all my different spreadsheets. Okay, so I'm going to read from here because I have a few parts highlighted in red. 
And everything that you are seeing, more active priesthood, more engaged relief society, more attention to the youth, more temples that are being built, uh, more creations of units. I think there might be a misspelling here. Um, okay, I'll fix that later. More creations of units, more home-centered experience. <clears throat> As all of that unfolds, every bit of that is an attempt to make us true living disciples of Christ 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, at all times, and in all things, and in all places that we may be in. That is what is happening in this church, and we've been preparing. For, we've been preparing for it for a long time. All the years that I have been a general authority, we have talked about these things. Okay, what things? More active priesthood, more engaged relief society, more attention to the youth, more temples that are being built, more creations of units, more home-centered experience. Okay, that's what he's talking about. All the years that I have been a general authority, we have talked about these things. The time is such that they are coming to pass now. I don't know what that means. I don't think it means the second coming is tomorrow. I don't think it is the day after tomorrow, but it could be. And it is going to be some tomorrow. So I put this on my common misconceptions spreadsheet because there's a misconception out there that the second coming can't happen now because fill in the blank because this hasn't happened yet. Uh, there's a lot of different schools of thought out there. <clears throat> uh, they, they usually tend to be on the spectacular side of things, expecting big cinematic things to take place uh, before the second coming, ranging from the 10 lost tribes coming from some hidden place in space or hollow earth or whatever, or uh, we know that it's not even close because the literal city of New Jerusalem, meaning the city that's going to take the place of Independence, Missouri, has not been built yet. The temple there has not been built yet. Um, so many just different things. Those are kind of like the two most common. There's there's any number of things. I've heard, I've heard before, <clears throat> and this is not right, <laughs> okay? I've heard before that uh, baptisms for the dead have to take place in Jerusalem before the second coming. There's just all sorts of like things that you'll never hear any prophet say, P things that people just insert themselves, um, usually from their own private interpretation of prophecy, which it's not for them to interpret. That's for the prophet to interpret things that have to do with the world, the church. <clears throat> so, you know, there tends to be these things out there um, where people will, will think or say, like, no, it can't be close because there's too much that has to happen. That was one of the most common things uh, that I would come across on my channel when I started is like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid that too much has to happen first. And uh, I've been doing this for two years. I'm no, by no means an expert, but I do know how to search things. We have powerful tools right now uh, because of the internet, things like the scripture citation index that allows you to search general conference talks, the journal of discourses, the scriptural teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. We have the entire history of the church on, uh, the, on BYU's website. We have the Joseph Smith papers. Uh, just so many different things. You've seen me use archive.org, which is a free online library. And there's a lot of church material on there that we've searched. And um, I haven't seen anything to suggest any of those things that we're still so far away because this hasn't happened or that hasn't happened. So bringing it back full circle, here's just one of those things. He says, I don't think it's I don't think it means the second coming is tomorrow. I don't think it is the day after tomorrow, but it could be. Now, he wouldn't say that. 
he wouldn't say that if all those other theories are true. If the literal city of New Jerusalem had to be built, then he could not he could not possibly say that because he'd be like, well, it can't be t- tomorrow or the day after tomorrow because we still have to build an entire city. And by the way, let me just do this really quick. Independence, Missouri. We've talked about what the original definition of a city was, according to the Joseph Smith papers, where you have the two um, versions of the city plat for uh, the New Jerusalem. And the size of the city was only going to be about 15 to 20,000 people. And then from there, you'd have other cities that would pop up uh, after the same pattern. But it's not the type of city that's going to house the entire world or the entire uh, church. Okay. And uh, basically, each city would have a stake. So a stake would be a city, and a city would be a stake. And what do you see right here next to this future temple, the Independence Visitor Center, Center, designed and built to be part of the 24 Temple Complex? Right next to it, there is a stake. There's a stake center. And <clears throat> when you look at, let's see, LDS meeting house locator. Go here. Zoom out. Here's Wichita. You look at the Kansas City area, and there's red dots all over the place. We have many, many, many cit- citizens of Zion that live in this area. Okay, so anyway, that's enough about that. So let's get back to let's get back to his thing. Um, okay, next page. It is going to happen someday, and we will be better prepared for it as we follow the living prophets, as we respond to the timing of the Lord and understand bit by bit and step by step and day by day, how these improvements, how these adjustments are incorporated into the kingdom of God on earth. Okay? So, that's all that I have to share um, from that. Again, it seems like it, I'd like to see what he says, because if he goes over the whole, uh, if he goes over the whole New Testament, I'd like to see what he says for the book of Revelation, but... Anyway, if you'd like to order that, I'll leave the link in the description below. Uh, while we're at it, <clears throat> I have a few new um, misconceptions or quotes for misconceptions on here that I'd like to share with you. So in no particular order. Okay, this is the next one as I go up. So the misconception is we shouldn't watch for the signs of the second coming. We should only focus on the here and now. I feel like I've read this, but maybe it, maybe not. But in any case, it's they're both short. So these are both from Joseph Smith, the prophet. And uh, they're from History of the Church. The first one is from volume 3, page 331. He says, We shall do well to discern the signs of the times as we pass along, that the day of the Lord may not overtake us as a thief in the night. Okay. Just plain and simple. And uh, that's backed up by all these scriptures. The scriptures themselves talk about it over and over again, how we need to watch for the signs of the times. So that may sa- that may sound good and catchy, like we should only focus on the here and the now because this is all that we can control. But that is not what we've been instructed to do. By the Lord himself, by Christ in the New Testament. Uh, the next one is from Joseph Smith as well. This is um, History of the Church, Volume 5, page 65. And it says, The earth is groaning under corruption, oppression, tyranny, and bloodshed. And God is coming out of his hiding place, as he said he would do, to vex the nations of the earth. Daniel, in his vision, saw convulsion upon convulsion. He uh, beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. And one was brought before him, like unto the Son of Man. And all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people did serve and obey him. 
It is for us to be righteous, <clears throat> that we may be wise and understand. For none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And that they turn many, and that they turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, here we go. So the misconception is prophets from the past taught more pure doctrine. Prophets today are removed from original teachings of the church. This is from Bruce R. McConkie. Um, this was during a, uh, essentially like a devotional. Uh, the name of the talk is called The Probationary Test of Mortality, Address at the University of Utah. Okay, so he says, we are going to be judged in an in intellectual field, and certainly that's, <clears throat> that's going to involve the seeking of truth and study. It's going to involve false doctrine. I think that a good deal of the false doctrine that goes around is purely an intellectual enterprise in the hands of those who believe it. They rationalize this or that to make the conduct uh, that they have harmonious. I think better, uh, I, th I can't think of a better illustration uh, of that than this Adam God philosophy that goes around. People say they believe that Adam is God and that we worship him and that he is the father of our spirits as well as the father of our bodies. They want to believe that, and the reason is uh, that they can quote somebody of the past who seems to have said it and somebody of the present who denies it's true. So um, this has come up, come up before on the channel. There's this weird Adam-God theory, and I think it's mostly held these days by the polygamist offshoots uh, from the church. But um, it was a misunderstanding of what Brigham Young said, um, but they, they hold it to be that Adam is our Heavenly Father. So that's what he's referring to. Okay, so they want to believe that and the reason is that they can quote somebody of the past who seems to have said it in somebody of the present who denies it, denies it's true. Then they can say, well, Spencer Kimball says this and somebody of the past said something else. And I'll choose to believe what somebody in the past said. And that enables them then to say that somebody of the past believed in plural marriage and Spencer, Kim Spencer Kimball doesn't. And because of the past prophet in sorry, quote, and because the past prophets are true and the living prophets aren't, I think I'll enter plural marriage. And of course, they lost their souls. Now that's just a perfect intellectual enterprise on their path to justify the lusts and appetites of the flesh. And I could have sworn that recently, I, I actually saw that. I saw on Facebook Man, where was it? I don't know if it was like one of these second coming groups, but it was like this post was talking about this guy that <clears throat> served a mission, got married, and then decided to join one of these groups and uh, become a polygamist. And uh, that's not the agenda right now. It's not. But this whole this whole notion that, well... You know, everything is more pure if it's from the past. That's not true. In fact, there was a recent, <clears throat> this was recently said in a recent general conference. Let me, you know, I'm going to look it up really quick and add it onto here. Give me just a second. Okay, I found it. So this is Elder Alan D. Haney of the 70. And it was this last general conference, the April 2023 general conference, a talk called A Living Prophet for the Latter Days. And he says, brothers and sisters, unlike vintage comic books and classic cars, prophetic teachings do not become more valuable with age. That is why we should not seek to use the words of past prophets to dismiss the teachings of living prophets. It's just, it's a very disturbing thing, uh, like it says, to dismiss the current prophet as, they, as though they weren't chosen by the Lord you know, before the earth even was. All of them were chosen before the earth was even created. And it's the Lord himself that chose them. So you also dismiss the Lord when you do that. 
So <clears throat> anyway, there's that. And th there's more I'm sure that I'll add to this over time. Let's see. Let's try and find the next one. Okay, New Jerusalem. The misconception is the center place will be in Salt Lake City, not Independence, Jackson County, Missouri. This is from Joseph Fielding Smith in Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 3, page 502. Okay, the section is called City of Zion and Temple Yet to be Built. Nearly 100 years have passed since the site of Zion was dedicated and the spot for the temple was chosen, and some of the members of the church seem to be fearful lest the, the word of the Lord shall fail. Others have tried to convince themselves that the original plan has changed and that the Lord does not require at our hands this mighty work, which has been predicted by the prophets of ancient times. We have not been released from this responsibility, nor shall we be. The word of the Lord will not fail. All right. And again, keep in mind, um, when you read the scriptures and it's talking about building a city or when it's talking about something, sometimes we think that we just completely, fully understand what that means. And there's only one way that that happens. But like I said, I would propose that the fact that we have a temple ready to go, like this could be converted into a temple anytime. We have a stake center that's there. And in the, in the immediate area, you have uh, lots of Zion households. And you have lots of meeting houses. And I don't know how many stakes are in this area. If you know how many stakes are in the Kansas City area, let me know. Put it in the description below. But I would say that to get it started, I think it's pretty much here. And uh, probably at the second coming, uh, you know, these other churches here will go the way of the earth. They'll go the way of every everyone else. Um, maybe many of the members of these churches, the Church of Christ Temple Lot and the Community of Christ, uh, maybe they will recognize Christ when he comes and they'll realize that this was the true church, that it, that it really was uh, his church. And then it's not going to be an issue. And then <clears throat> already having this one built, we can move forward with plans and build the whole uh, 24 temple complex. All right, we have all this land right here. Somebody recently confirmed me, and I'm sorry, I can't remember if it was like in a Facebook message or Instagram, but someone told me that they recently visited and confirmed that uh, this whole piece of land down here uh, belongs to the church. So anyway, okay, so there's that. Let's just do a couple more. And then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Here's another one. Um, the misconception is you will have to literally fight your neighbor in combat or your other choice is to flee to the New Jerusalem in Jackson County, Missouri for physical safety. This is from David R. Stone of the 70. And you'll notice I have many other quotes. I'm just I'm just going over the new ones. OK, this is from his talk called Zion in the midst of Babylon, April 2006 General Conference. Okay, <clears throat> he says, If Babylon is the city of the world, Zion is the city of God. The Lord has said of Zion, Zion cannot be built up unless it is, the prin it is by the principles of the law of the celestial kingdom. And for this is Zion, the pure in heart. For this is Zion, the pure in heart. Wherever we are, whatever city we may live in, we can build our own Zion by the principles of the celestial kingdom and ever seek to become the pure in heart. Zion is the beautiful and the Lord holds, holds it in his own hands. Our homes can be places which are a refuge and a protection as Zion is. This is coming, this is language coming from DNC when it's talking about Zion, a place of refuge and safety. We do not need to become as puppets in the hands of the culture of the place and time. We can be courageous and can walk in the Lord's paths and follow his footsteps. And if we do, we will be called Zion and we will be the people of the Lord. I pray that we will be strengthened to resist the onslaught of Babylon 
and that we can create Zion in our homes, in our communities, indeed, that we may have Zion in the midst of Babylon. We seek Zion because it is the habitation of our Lord, who is Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. In Zion and from Zion, his luminous and incandescent light will shine forth and he will rule forever. I bear witness that he lives and loves us and will watch over us. Okay. Again, I have many, 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 many more quotes, but that's not the point of this video. Okay, let's do one more. And uh, it looks like it's going to be Elder Jeffrey R. Holland. Uh, let's see, this is from The Ensign. It's an article called The Call to be Christlike, the June 2014 Ensign. The misconception is the entire church still has to be gathered to New Jerusalem, Jackson, Jackson County, Missouri. Let me take the new off. Okay, so this is what he says. One of the many unique characteristics of our dispensation is the changing nature of how we establish the kingdom of God on earth. In these days, sorry, in the, you know what, I'm formatting these things a little bit different, so I'm going to do this, bring the next paragraph down like that. Okay. In these last days, in our dispensation, we have become mature enough to stop running. We've become mature enough to plant our feet and our families and our foundations in every nation, kindred, tongue, and people permanently. Zion is everywhere, wherever the church is. And with that change, we no longer think of Zion as where we go to live. We think of it, of, we think of it as how we are going to live. You guys, this is the importance of listening to living prophets and apostles. Okay? We all, individually and as a church, learn line upon line, precept upon precept, and they are in tune of what the with what the plan is and how things are going to play out. And <clears throat> most importantly, how the Lord interprets the scriptures because he's the one that gives the scriptures. He's the one that gives the words to the prophets. And when he speaks those words to the prophets, he means something specific. And it's not for us to guess and shoehorn uh, what we think it means. And the way that we know what, what the scriptures mean is we look to the current prophets and apostles. And we study what they have already said through the spirit of prophecy. Whether it's in regards to a scripture from the past or whether it's something brand new that's not in the scriptures. Because the restoration is ongoing. And um, Elder Bednar talked about how there's many things that have not yet been revealed. And, and we find that in the scriptures. Not everything has been revealed yet. So you can expect change. And you can expect better understanding as time goes on. Well, uh, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.